Now that might not have been the answer that you expected. So let's do this problem. It's a bit more complicated and of course more interesting because this man is heterozygous for two different genes. He's got two different versions of the A allele on the big chromosome and he's got two different versions of the G allele on a separate chromosome. So here we go. It's just It's a no-brainer. We just replicate the chromosomes. chromosomes. They find their homologous partners. A1 and A2 pair up. G1 and G2. Oh, no, not that way. This way. G1 and G2 pair up. Spindle fibers pull them to the center of the cell. And when everybody's ready, the homologs are pulled apart. So that's meiosis one. Now meiosis two, again, we're following two chromosomes, but it's exactly the same. The sister chromatids are still held together by cohesin. Spindle fibers move them to the center of each of the two products of meiosis one. And then when everybody's ready, cohesin is cut and the sister chromatids come apart. And the result is two cells that are G2A2 and two cells that are G1A1. But that wasn't the right answer. How come? Well, let's back up. So we're going to run meiosis in reverse. Pair the sisters back up bring the homologs back together, line them up on the uh, so-called metaphase plate, and pull them apart. Did you notice what was different this time? Last time, we had a long pink chromosome with a short yellow chromosome. They went like this. This time, they went like this. Each of those outcomes is equally likely because the spindle fibers don't know which genotype of chromosome they're attaching to. They just attach and pull. They don't know which homologue it is. And so half of the time it's going to turn out this way because the spindle fibers from the same pole attach to both pink chromosomes. And half the time it's going to be this way because the spindle fibers from this pole attach to one pink chromosome and one yellow chromosome. And that's why we cannot predict the outcome of this particular meiosis unless we have additional information, and that information being which way did the spindle fibers attach to the homologs when in meiosis 1. Now, this problem is the same as the previous one, with one difference. Previously, we were thinking about a single meiosis. Now, we're thinking about many meioses.